So welcome everyone to the today's Basic Income Blockchain Collective uh, meeting. Um, according to the agenda, we will start with a few updates. So if anyone who has an update can raise his digital hand, <laughs> so I know who has an update <laughs> and who doesn't have an update. No digital hands yet. So then I will start uh, with a very short update. Uh, some of you have probably already seen it, but not all of you. We did an interview with uh, 10 participants of Kuwaiti A uh, about um, the short term effects of their basic income that they received through impact markets. And I can I will put up the link in the in the chat, um, and I can really recommend to watch it because it was heartwarming. Um, uh, what they said, they were really open, and uh, I was flabbergasted about uh, the short term effects. I mean, when they were talking about savings, long term investments, uh, children. Uh, being nourished, children going to school regularly, uh, they were saving, groups were saving to buy goats and sheep. I mean, it was really amazing uh, what the effects were in, uh, in only three weeks time for some of them. So uh, I will put up the link in the chat uh, and you, uh, I invite you to watch it. Um, it was a th 30 minutes uh, interview, so I will not be able to share it now, but um, you can watch it later. Umberto, <laughs> yeah, that's not a hand, that's a heart. <laughs> so anyone else who has an update? And then we had an article in uh, on BN website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We also had an article on the BN website where we uh, gave uh, attention to the to the uh, to the to the program. So I put both links up uh, as soon as anyone else is uh, talking. Ria. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, everyone. How are you? Hi, it's everyone. really good to be back here with you. So we have a small update as well. It's in the works, it's in the making, but we are um, in the process of signing a partnership with MTN, the Telecommunications Network, to provide, um, that's in partnership with MTN and in collaboration with Impact Market, to provide um, health insurance for all our 14,000 something refugees in Ghana. Wow. Yes, UBI-based health insurance. UBI-based health insurance, what does that look yes. like? Well, it's, uh, it's going to work in along the same parameters as, um, as our unconditional basic income with the refugees already. But this is specifically aimed at health insurance because a lot of them haven't got health insurance. And, um, well, the conditions of the camp also foster a lot of sickness and also the kinds of work, informal work that they get into foster a lot of accidents. Mm -hmm. So it would be nice to have them covered under this for the first time in history. And hopefully, hopefully this will be a beacon to other refugee communities to take up. Well, thanks, Ria. I have something to add as well from Rio. Um, mm. We'd also love to hear your thoughts on um, health insurance uh, for refugees or health insurance generally for very low income communities. So. Um, if anybody has a comment, that would be great. In the meantime, I'll just tell you about something else we've been doing at Rio, which is uh, we've been conducting a small survey of, of sorts. Uh, we're in the data collection phase, but I have to say some of the things that we've found is absolutely beautiful. Uh, for example, we spoke to people who are about $200 in into their claiming uh, process. And um, some of the things he said were very cute, for example, um, uh, uh, one of, one of the, um, one of the guys, he's about 24, 25 years old. He, he said, thank you so much for letting me finally buy a cap for myself. And somebody else said like, thank you so much for letting me buy some socks for myself. And, um, as Ria mentioned, the informal activities or income-based activities that are carried out in most of these camps, um, involve, um, things where they need gloves or they need shoes that can actually withstand uh, a good amount of work. And uh, they've finally been able to protect their hands by buying gloves that aren't torn. Um, and these are only just a few of 
the many things that we've learned. Um, in addition to these nice things, we've also learned that people now have, mo most people at one of the camps that we've spoken to have gone uh, since last December, since they've eaten meat um, or since they've eaten rice and um, they're saving up their UBI so that they can be able to get some meat and rice this Christmas. So especially with my experience in Ghana, it seems um, a bit unlikely that people will go without eating meat. So uh, there are some sad things as well, but we're hoping to have a report by uh, the 10th of next of this month. And so we'll be very happy to share it with everybody. Thank you. Great, so that will be a better Christmas uh, than they used to then. <laughs> cool. If no one else has an update, then well, we'll give the word to Nilce about the hackathon. Yeah, um, I will be sharing screen. So I, I prepared um, a short presentation for this. And also apologies from Miguel's side. He, he has to be on field in the field now. So he has very bad connection, but yeah, we work this together. So I will, um, let me uh, share my screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is, okay, please let me know when you can see it. Can you see it now? Yes, yes. Yep. Cool. And you hear me well, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So yeah, most of the I think most of the people that are here were also like in this um in this session where we were brainstorming about like I mean the session helped to get to know each other a bit more. And also for Miguel and me to get to know you more and your your organizations, what they do, what are they looking forward in the in the near future, but also in the long term. And after, like, we analyzed. Um, you remember we were using Menti, right? So we analyzed the the answers that we got in the Menti, and we went through the video again. And these are the results. And at the end, that we will, uh, you will see like potential challenges, or it's like just like two I, two potential ideas. But I will tell you how they how we came to that. So um, yeah. So the first thing it was like, the question would be like, what we want to accomplish, right? And I think most of us or all of us agreed that this is the main question, how not to leave anyone behind when trying to provide UVI for all. And I think um, all the organizations that are here are trying to achieve this from different fronts. Uh, but what we want is like how to unify this, right? And achieve this as a group. Um, so for that, there were three main, let's say, um, yeah, three main areas that we could um, let's classify. So it was like, can we do that with technology? And these are some of the main ideas that you said that time. Like, how can we accomplish it? If we use technology, we need to maybe give tools to communities to admin their UBI. Uh, we need to implement technology to give access to UBI or provide smartphones or provide the technology. So. Um, this would be like, I wouldn't, I'm not going to say that this would be the challenges, but something that is something that as a consensus got, like we, we could understand if we try to say like, how can we accomplish the question that I just showed before, if we just focus on technology. But what happens, because also some of you were saying without technology, it would be interesting to know if we don't have technology, how we can still achieve this. And then, um, yeah, there was like, what do we need to, or how do we do this? So it's just like how we can reach people without access to smartphones, how we can humanize the topic and stimulate conversations about UBI and how we can reach maybe the student community. I think the student community or students was a word that many of you were also like students and academy, like this was a word that you were repeating or you were putting in the table a lot last uh, in the last conversation. Um, but also something important that you also mentioned and that we could spot was through partnerships. So you're, you're already um, together in this as a collective, but you were mentioning, or some of you were mentioning that through partnerships you can achieve. And also some of you were giving examples on how 
some partnerships um, that you have done have achieved to uh, achieve things in like with less time than you expected, or you just have given a lot of more uh, advantages to get into into the field. So I was like, with what kind of partnerships are we interested? Are we interested in NGOs, in investors, in national agencies, or I, wait, I, it went, yeah, or big companies, right? And then, so then this comes to the following question that could be a question for like the hackathon. So is, is it possible to couple technology, non-technology strategies and partnerships to achieve UBI for all? And I think this would be <laughs> like the main question, putting together all the three aspects that I just showed you before. And then it, how, how can we do this? So maybe I'm taking into account many of your comments. It was like, this is just like some ideas, right? Uh, but this is more or less how we are um, following, like the steps that we are following to create the challenges. So it was like, could be like maybe one challenge that we, we think that a user-friendly platform or, or app can, can help to concentrate, I don't know, like partners and then users, but also give them the information about how to maybe manage their savings, how and where they can use them. Now that I heard at the beginning that they were saying about the health insurance and all that, it's like, Imagine if you can pay, I don't know, health insurance with the, the kind of currency that UBI is giving you, right? So, but if you don't know this, uh, then it's very difficult for them to know how to invest or how to use their, their, their money or, you know, like the, UBI, like, yeah, the UBI that they are receiving. And I don't know, maybe also like if we want to design a marketing campaign to reach donors and to connect them and to the potential end users, just like to sense, like sen yeah, to make them sensitive to this topic, so maybe they can uh, give more from them. And like from the first point, we were also thinking like if we plan or if this, let's say this is a challenge. I'm not saying this will be the challenges, but this is how maybe we can create the challenges. Then we need to think like maybe we integrate user experience, design thinking, co-creation, social innovation um, to achieve this. And yeah. Uh, so I would say this is what we have analyzed so far, what we got from you, from the brainstorming and from your ideas and all the, the information that you were giving to us. But still we need to, um, yeah, to make this a bit, to sharpen this with the people that are going to be like in the core team for organizing this. But yeah, I would like to hear some of your, um, your feedback because I don't know, I, I hope we could reflect uh, or summarize properly our discussion of last week. But if we missed something, because there is also some other part um, that we didn't put here because it's, it's I mean, it's a part of the topic, but it's further away. So I think these ones, these topics or, yeah, these ideas are the ones that we can achieve in the short term. And there are others that you also mentioned, but I think that's for the long term um, that we can discuss that in the, in the core group, um, let's say. Uh, but yeah, this is more or less what we found, what we summarized, and would be great to hear if what, what do you think about if this really reflects or we are missing something. Thank you, uh, Nielsje. Um, anyone with a comment already? I have a I have a question. Well, I have a suggestion um, because. I would really not want, want to guide people how to spend their money uh, mm -hmm. as a collective. Um, I think we should make a hard stop uh, at, the, uh, at the moment when the people receive it. And we should not interfere on uh, uh, guiding them how to save or, or where to spend it on, on or whatever. Uh, because, I mean, the, the core, one of the core characteristics of basic income is the freedom of choice. And that also means that we don't need to monitor uh, what they do with it. Uh, I see Jessica not <laughs> nodding. Um, um, but I think we really should stop as soon as the people get the money in their hands. And it's up to them if they want to share stuff. So um, uh, for the hackathon, I think we should focus on, on getting the money to the people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone? No one else. 
Okay, well then, uh, you did a perfect job then, uh, Niels. <laughs> so we, all, we also had some homework, so maybe we can talk about that. Yeah, also, but Sarah, are you like, would you like to say anything? Maybe I was like seeing you a bit like nodding and checking on the slides. No, 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 no. I think it was a very good summary of what we discussed the, the other day and uh, um, what was going on in my mind, I think uh, between last meeting and this meeting, in India, uh, quite a lot of new initiatives I have seen from the government. Now the government is seriously planning to issue digital currency uh, mm. and make, I mean, I don't know, uh, it is, it is, this is to counter uh, the crypto or the complementary currency movement, or also uh, I don't know, I think simultaneously at the same time, you saw China actually banning uh, crypto uh, the last week, I think, uh, uh, and that is one thing. The second thing that has been happening is I have discovered that Google Pay and Phone Pay that we use in India, they already are allowing to transfer money without internet. Uh, I think that is one, definitely one step, Avina, Avina and we were discussing about the roadblocks in India. I think these are all inputs for Absolutely, our yes. thing. And the third interesting development is now the Indian Stock Exchange um, Regulation Authority is planning to allow a social enterprise to participate in the stock exchange and to raise, I don't know, what I, I, I'm not an expert on that, but I think it's an opportunity I discussed with Srikant, who is also a, a colleague in, in, this, this, in this domain. Uh, he says that it's a great opportunity for us to participate in that and in terms of fundraising or inve attracting investors into this, but I don't know that world at all. Mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I think, I feel that as nation states, countries are preparing for a future in their own ways, uh, I think that actually makes us feel that now we have to really accelerate our efforts. They looks like they're going to bypass uh, or they're going to, yes, they're, they're anticipating what the crypto thing is going to do. And then they're trying to create, I don't know. I've just wanted to, I felt that it's things are happening very quickly. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. I think we can also like think about it maybe to focus also the challenges because um, now that you were mentioning about the government be being interested in, you know, like different governments being interested in like adopting the, the cryptocurrency. I just remember like, I think it's like two or three months ago, El Salvador already um, approved the cryptocurrency to be part of the, of the currency in the country. So it's completely legal, it's accepted and a lot of more, you know, like uh, more agencies and more like supermarkets and these chains are, are already like making this transition into also accepting that, which I think it's, I mean, it's more complex than just saying it like that. But the first step is that they made it as a local currency. Yeah. Yeah. And if we can like maybe achieve that in other parts of the world, then it's going to start flowing more. Yeah, right. So yeah, I think that could also, I mean, when we start like shaping more or less the challenges, I think that could be some other, because now, I don't know if you agree with that, with this, but like these three that we made, like could be part of the challenge. Like one challenge is how we make the, when we have technology, when I work with your technology and if the end users have technology, how to make it more efficient, easier for them. That's one challenge. The other challenge is we have the technology, but they don't have the technology. They don't have cell phones. They don't have anything. So how we make this process better, how we end like, how we help them to make this, I maybe not give a cell phone to all of them, but may create a center in that where they can just go and, you know. And then the other is the partnership that I think it's to achieve the other two, it's very important, the partnership. So that's how, that's why we kind of divided this. So one challenge would be with technology, other without technology, other with the partnership. And maybe the partnerships could be focused on this part, maybe the government or, or all these new things that are um, coming every every day almost. Yeah, yeah um, every day. But I don't know if you agree. Like, I think it makes sense, at, at least from our side and taking into account all that we have known from you. But if you feel like there is something else maybe we should include, it's, it's also good that we can hear. 
I see that Scott has to leave. Scott Morris, is there anything that he should uh, say before he goes out or anybody wants to ask something? Uh, well, I'm going to have a few minutes to talk about a mapping session that I can yeah. facilitate for us. Uh, but I don't have to do that just now. I can pop off and join back on. If you guys are still going, then great. Uh, otherwise, I mean, I can also just send this in document form. It's a, a facilitation flow that I'm putting together presently for another uh, cooperative client. Uh, so I should have uh, some better documentation of it coming together in the weeks uh, to come here. So uh, that can be shared out with everyone. Okay, so you're trying to come back and if you don't manage, we will uh, receive a document then. <laughs> yes, yeah? plan B, okay. I will send documents. <laughs> Wait, but but this is supposed to be just like a 30 minute check in on like a time sensitive assignment here so sorry for the overlap oh that's okay that's okay okay we'll, right, be, well, we'll be here we'll be here 30 minutes from now i think yeah okay all right Tell that. okay cool okay Nils, you go on um no that, that was from my side i was like <laughs> just like throwing the, the question about these three main aspects if you think they are quite like correct to start with, like we can add others, but if you think those are also um, the main areas we have to maybe focus on. Yeah, I also think it will probably become more clear when we do the working group sessions. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, what I, what I always feel that helps is when you really take like one example to uh, work on all those different aspects for example we were talking uh, uh, a few hours ago about uh, for example the uh, the situation in india if you take uh, an urban area where the waste collectors uh, are, are the target group and one uh, a rural area uh, where a, a, a village uh, uh, in india is, is is a target group and then work on all those different aspects to get the money uh, you, what what money are you going to distribute? What kind of currency are you going to distribute? Are there different options? And what are the steps to take to get the money directly? Well, in the in the hands of the people. Uh, and uh, in today, we are still thinking we still need to 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 the people to give the possibility to use their national currency. I think that that should be the end stage at this moment because cryptocurrencies are not yet adopted uh, enough um, to be used in every store. But I, I feel that always helps because then you can make it more concrete and the imag imagination is, 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 is more alive when you really actually have a, a target group that you can uh, 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 even invite maybe uh, during the yeah. hackathon to, uh, to be part yeah, of it. Exactly. And I think we have like a very nice different examples. I remember like last time Jessica was also talking about this in Brazil. Sarat has the experience in, in India. We have the also like Davina with experience in, um, in Africa and they are different contexts also and different target people that it started with. So I think that could be, yeah, you're, you're right. It's, uh, that could be great to also like maybe bring some of those people that have been involved and just share the experience. And from there, people that are in the hackathon, like trying to solve the challenge can also, you know, like get more ideas. Because yeah. yeah, if this is something they haven't heard much about or that they have studied, but they haven't been involved in the implementation, it can be quite hard, like, you know, to imagine even like how it could be. But I think it's, yeah, it's, it's great. Like, I think we should do that. Yeah, and then maybe, I mean, uh... They don't necessarily have to be there the full three days, but they can be, for example, on invitation to, to share a little story and have, a, have an interview yeah. or something like that. Um, I don't know if you like already have like in your case studies or like you already have some materials some videos or some or we can get to interview one of the people or something to so they they um tell their experience on like, you know, how was it since they got the invitation or they heard about it until they actually got the money and like this that you were saying that Avina, I think, right, that she was saying that there was people saying like, ah, finally, I could buy a cap, finally, I could do this. So, but that we hear from them, their experience. So if they found it difficult, if it was complicated at the beginning, but it got easier later, or if they are still trying to figure it out. So I think that's very rich and 
that give, can give a lot of information to, of course, to you, but also to the people that are going to be part of the hackathon. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I think it can be uh, quite easy, right? Like if you already have contact with the with the people, just like. Uh, the, the, the first link in the chat is 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 a, is, a, is, a, is an interview with ten people of a village in, in Kenya, uh, where they talk about uh, uh, yeah the yeah ha what happened after they received it, and they talk about you know old people that were uh, techno had technophobia and now are you know <laughs> yeah. swapping around their phones. <laughs> so yeah. It's also that's great, like to start, like what we were saying at the beginning. I think uh, like humanizing this topic, you know, mm -hmm. that's the perfect way. So um, I think, yeah, that's that will, yeah, help in many many ways. But, hey, yeah. I, yes, yeah, I, I have a small suggestion uh, for impact market. I was wondering, uh, Jessica, if it is possible to make a for impact market to make a very short short film actually um, what you did in to reach this last person in COVID and different if you if you can show if you can show the the flow chart like I think Ria you all of you know and we know it from a distance uh, I think um, if we have this is a perfect uh, flow chart uh, of different stakeholders players and uh, when we apply that to countries like India, we know exactly where are the pain points and uh, where the chain the, the chain is breaking. Uh, and then how to then that would be a good indication for the hackathon to say that where are the problems, what are the linkages that are broken, what is that we should do to fix. In fact, if I see something like a flowchart like that, I can put my finger what are the problems in India. And Avina, of course, will be able to do that. Uh, I think that would be a great input to the, uh, I mean, be a participants of hackathon. Yeah, no, I can, I can definitely uh, do that. No, no issue. Yeah. Um, and for the pain point, yeah, I, I, I do agree on, you know, seeing the chart. I just think that the pain point are not the same in any country, and in, in impact market, we are in twenty three different countries, so each country are really different pain points that can be te technology, that can be internet, that can be nothing related to that, that can be the cash out regulation or et cetera. So I think it's really hard to find, you know, what to work on because every country is different and every uh, scenario is different. So, but yeah, happy to, to, to provide that. I think you're right, Sarah, it would be extremely interesting. I have an, uh, another suggestion. Can you hear me? Um, maybe it uh, would be an idea to make a UBI social media platform using open source components like XMPP. What is XMPP? <laughs> oh, that is the best open source messaging platform there is. It's nobody knows it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, secure and it's fast. Yeah, maybe we can make a synergy um, between using a, like traditional social media that have more traction and then use what you were saying, because if nobody knows, so we can just, you know, combine the two to get more traction on the other one that nobody knows about, perhaps. Of course, uh, you can combine uh, several social media platforms, but of course there's only one uh, without censorship. Maybe that would be a nice goal. It's just a new idea. <laughs> Share the link, Roland, so that we can have it um, close to our hands and we can start studying about it. Yeah, you can just. Can you, yeah. Share it in the chat. Yeah. It's in the chat. So, as a technician, I uh, looked around uh, quite a long time for the best components for our project, Citizens Island. 
and the two best social media platform decentralized are uh, Matrix and XMPP. And I would prefer XMPP. There you can make uh, small groups of small societies, uh, uh, villages, for example, who can communicate with each other, or you can make, uh, make bigger societies, as you wish. So this would be like um, uh, something to, like Discord, basically, but more secure? Oh, it's... Uh, it's more secure and without uh, all this, the beautiful things of Discord. Okay. It's more like a Telegram, but then secure and you can easily make groups. That would be uh, something for a typical hackathon where programmers are programming. <laughs> Yeah, but I do feel that the risk is that if you focus on social media platforms, that the focus will not be on UB on basic income enough. I think that the, the main topic should be basic income. And maybe this can be a topic that we can discuss when we talk about the uh, UBI Blockchain Alliance website uh, that Anna and Tobeto are designing. Um, I don't know what you feel about that. Um, yeah, that would be a part that will will go in the side of getting maybe some investors or patrons or so on, just to show what is going on, to commercialize it, just to get the attention of the people we want to get attention from. But this is not for our end users, it's for those who want to invest in this. So, yeah, yeah. I think uh, the website will have... Um, it's very nice, so I think it's very appetible for people who want to know more and it's easy to understand. So, yeah, that, that's good for that side of the job. Yeah, the maybe, website, maybe... yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Hitler. Oh, you go. Thank you. Uh, the website is not yet uh, finished. This is like the, the initial draft that was made for Proof of Humanity. But as, as I said before, um, like we will redesign it or now we will feed it with content from all the organizations here so yesterday i i, I um finished the directory like a, some forms that i will present later when i have the time in, in this presentation in this uh, meeting and there you will send the information from your organizations so that we can feed the website with this and will be completely different but the design uh, will be the same, like all the colors and like how it's presented. We will just have the information from everybody. Yeah. Okay. And we will talk about that more extensively uh, later in the meeting, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Nilce, back to you. Yeah, I think, uh, no, I've been taking notes of what you are saying. And, but I think, yes, yeah, you were, like you were saying, Hilde, at the, when we have the focus groups, uh, we will be able to, you know, to just narrow a lot because that's what we have to do also to narrow a lot. As, as Jessica was saying, we have different contexts. So maybe we, yeah, we have to decide if, it, if we make it, in, we make this global, or we want to just like, we can make it global in order to make it, uh, uh, to put it out and that more people, you know, um, can, just be curious about this and try to participate. Or if we are more interested in a region, we make it, it from a region and we shape it to the region needs and with the background information that we already have. Or if we don't have information, then we shape it to that, the knowing that we don't have any background information, but we have the experiences of other contexts. So uh, that's what is going to happen next. So I think what I need now, or what I would like to know is about the homework. <laughs> so if you already thought about the date, I also have some suggestions kind of, um, but I would like to hear it from you before. And also if you thought, or you already have uh, the person or the people that would be in these focal groups to shape the challenges of the hackathon. So maybe you can help me with that, Hilde, and just like asking the others around or? Yes, um, I mean, Rio, who is going to be uh, the representative for the blockchain 
So Ria and Avina. Hi, I'm so sorry. I was struggling to unmute myself, oh. <laughs> but, but I will be the representative. I'm, I'm also sorry about not replying sooner. Things have been crazy, but I would be the representative. Cool. And have you uh, also discussed about the date, your preference? Yes, I think, uh, I think the November one worked out the best for us. Um, let me just check, please. Sorry. If you'd like to move on to the next person, I'll just come back and tell you. Okay. Jessica? <laughs> yes, so obviously it would, it would be me. I'm the only one here. Um, and for, for us, for impact market side, it would be next year. Uh, I understand if you want to launch that now, but on our side, we have the DAO, the token, the events, a uh, new community. This is Im impossible for, for us uh, before the end of the year. Okay, thank you. Roland? Um, the same two answers. <laughs> so it will be you and next year. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, Umberto and Anna. Um, I will be joining uh, as a part of a metagame that has not been presented yet here, but we can invite them at the next meeting because I'm doing marketing from them. So I, I would like to represent them in, in this hackathon. Uh, yeah, just to give you a context what metagame is, because it sounds like something that came from nothing. So metagame is basically building um, a platform that enables people to onboard on Web3 without having to have any knowledge about it. So it's just a step further or something that we might need in the future. But I believe that if, if uh, some of us from Metagame can be involved inside um, uh, this hackathon, we can see the development of the whole story and later we can give services. For example, this could be useful for refugees. Um, as Avina was saying, um, like, so it has a lot of potential and we will do a proper presentation soon, next time. Cool, so, so if I understand it well, Anna, then you will be in the core group representing Metagame? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. And it's uh, Umberto, yeah, go on. Um, so for, for the year, I will say that on February will be great to have it. Um, I think it's, it's the best because we need a lot of time to set the working groups and we have not done that yet. So that will be the most realistic thing for me. Um, and then I will keep participating here. I am not representing Proof of Humanity. I am working, as I said before, for the UBI Blockchain Collective slash Alliance, that we will say later. Um, I will summon somebody from Proof of Humanity because as far as I know, there is not yet like someone very well defined there. Maybe it will be Santi City, that is the main developer, but maybe not. So I will arrange that and bring somebody from Proof of Humanity so that this person can represent and I can and I cannot have like this conflict of interest and I can just focus on uh, the UBI blockchain. Okay, thanks. Uh, Hans, are you representing anyone actually? <laughs> or Except just... myself, no, nobody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then I will skip you for this part. Yeah. Um, uh, and I will be representing uh, Mission Possible and also Bien. And uh, our preference is also February uh, because that's, it's not feasible to do it before the end of the year. Yeah. And Kotani Pei is not present, and Encointer is also not present. So uh, I will send them an email uh, separately if they want to be uh, represented in the core team. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, yeah, I was also yeah I was also thinking actually I, I wanted to hear you first, but actually also with Miguel we were thinking about this and with the times and you know like we, we already said December it's out of the equation because it's a crazy month. Everyone is like closing projects and going on vacations, planning things, you know, so, and then it would have to be November, but we're already October and it's going to be crazy to try to, you know, to organize. So also our like date in mind was February, 2022, but I think uh, it's like 
on a consensus now. So I think that would be, we can already set that date. And that's also great because I also can, we can also start um, bringing our partnership person that's going to be talking and, you know, like working. But um, now that we have a date and this person can know a bit more about like when to start and what to start now, what to start or what to continue in January. But I think it's a good moment to start conversations but with a, with a date, with a defined date on mind. So also people that, uh, or organizations you will be contacting would be uh, aware that it's coming next year. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the meetings will be once a week. Yeah, the meetings will be once a week. I think um, for next week, uh, I think our next, it's not that our next meeting will be next week, maybe in two weeks, because next week, uh, I want to, um, Miguel and, and me, we're going to be working on like a concept note that, and some planning that we can follow for, that we can have structure for each meeting so we don't have to be like, what are we going to do this meeting or that? So we will present to you like the upcoming meetings from until, well, we will check with the core group until which date in December, maybe before the 15th or something, I guess, because everyone goes after the 15th. But we would like to make this planning where you can see um, like, okay, next meeting, we're going to discuss this next meeting. So you can know more or less the topics we're going to discuss. So you're also a bit prepared on what's coming or you bring your ideas for that discussion. Um, and yeah, so then in, I think in, up, um, in two weeks, um, like, yeah. And after two weeks, we, they will be each week. And we can decide in two weeks also which day maybe it's like better, maybe also like this, we keep these Fridays at this time, which seems to work for most of us, or we just decide other other dates. But yeah, that's, and, and thanks a lot for, yeah, for you volunteering or for putting yourself there for the, for the teams and the topics. And, and yeah, now is when the core work starts Great. <laughs> for the challenges. Thank you so much, Nishri. Thank you, Thank you. I will. I will. Uh, I will give you the. Yeah. I will uh, ask for 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 Encointer and and Kutani um, uh, Bay if they want to if they want to join, and uh, send you the names and emails of the people that are in the core team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah, I can help on that because the directory that I made, like this registry, one includes the registry to the dream teams, let's say to the working uh, group groups, and one of those is the hackathon. So yourself can register there and just click on hackathon and then we'll have a database. So it will be easier. Okay. I will send that email every, to everybody after this meeting. Fantastic. Just before we move, I was I wanted to ask Sarat if you are interested in also like being involved in the core group or because um yeah you were giving also a lot of ideas but I don't know if like you want to be involved okay. in the meetings or each two or I don't know just like in some of them or yeah but Hilda is there so I'm constantly in touch with Hilda so oh, okay. we are constantly okay. discussing so okay. I think that's that's enough yeah yeah definitely I, I, of course I'm involved we are just separating our tasks yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Then let's move on to the UBI Blockchain Alliance, um, Umberto and Anna. Um, so uh, Hilde was very kind to send me the logo that has been created so far. Um, but I, I got an artistic moment. So I made a couple of logos. So I will just show them to you like one minute and maybe send them to you. Maybe we can discuss if we would like some other logo and so on. So we are all under the same um, logo. Um, let me just, can I share my screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are, I don't know if you see my screen. These are not professional logos, it's something I've uh, research, but maybe if we have a designer, they can help us out just to give a couple of more options. So this is one. And this could be another one. Um, this is one connected to the one um, we already have. And like this. So yeah, just to give a couple of more options. Um, 
Uh, as a note, th these designs were made to fit the design of the web page. Web page, yeah. I really like the the false one personally. Uh, so good, good job. It's re it's really cool. Yeah, it's very cool. I I do like the green one. I like the uh, the diamond one. The diamond one that goes into each other. That one's really pretty too. But uh, fantastic! This is so exciting. So the, the we we need to be in the escort. Um, I will send you again the the link so that we can all register there because we can put the logos and we can vote there. Yes, and for example, uh, Hilde said in a mail that she, you know, there was somebody still uh, finishing the, or publishing the, the design, so that we have all, all of them there and we can, all of, the, of us vote. And we can start using Discord as a way of common communication, not waiting until this moment to, to talk. And this is just an example of what we can do, right? Um, I, mean, I don't know if, yes. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking, yeah, that, because I mean, we will be talking about merging collective and alliance and things like that. Yeah. Um, is it distracting or confusing if we have two different logos? How two different logos? So if we have like the logo um, um, uh, that I sent you and another one for the website, or should we not maybe talk about merging completely? I'm, I'm not I'm just... Mm, like if we are merging, I think then um, we should maybe, I don't know who is the designer making the logo, we should maybe have a chat just so that since we have this, this design of the website, which is very like um, soft and playful and mm -hmm. colorful, uh, we have to talk with the designers. So the logo that we create, if we merge, has to be in line with the, uh, with the website. Otherwise it's just a punch yeah. in the eye. It doesn't look good. So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I, can, I can take charge of that um, to, if you put me in contact with who is doing the logo, so we can maybe work together and find out something that will work for both and that could be cool yeah 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 and these also uh, um, uh, uh, we're also working on an animation just you know like the blockchain collective that like we have different uh, come from different sites and that will be finished in a couple of weeks i hope and um yeah so i will uh, after after our next agenda point <laughs> when we talk about merging um, um, I will uh, bring him into uh, contact with you, Anna. Cool. Thanks. May I jump in? Um, I don't know whether this train uh, left the station uh, already, but uh, from a programmer point of view, blockchain is the most primitive data structure you can think of. Uh, do we really want to hop on that, uh, that term? But it's maybe the train is already gone. <laughs> uh, from an uh, information technology perspective, blockchain is the most secure IT technology on earth. Yeah, I, I see what you mean, it, but it's crypto, not the blockchain. It's not the linkage of blocks. The linkage of blocks is the most primitive data structure Although it's the most, uh, one of the most secure, you can also have it in trees, Merkle tree. Uh, but uh, forget it. <laughs> it's no, only think, a, my, 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 uh, my guts are grumbling. Yeah. I think we're still in time to change it if it's needed to, to have something that it's fitting and that will last in time, on, in time and that is well understandable. So we can still do something about it. Uh, the idea about blockchain is what is about uh, having the different blockchains out there to join into this uh, common effort. That why that's why the, the name had the blockchain, but um, just just because of that. But uh, crypto, of course, is also uh, is in, is a more simple word. I would agree there. Yeah, we can do some research, like uh, 
yeah, research on the communities because we have been uh, having this with the crypto commons um, gathering and like we were saying like how can we name ourselves and, the, and it, this, this same thing came and about crypto, I like the name crypto but then it has a, a connotation of hiding of uh, like something that you don't want to others to see and the blockchain is more an information chain that's why uh, it was about that. But we can do some kind of research, like a uh, social research, like what does people think about different names before we actually set up into something. Uh, I don't think it's really, really that relevant uh, to, to, like really, really relevant, I don't see it. It's UBI blockchain collective slash alliance, whatever. Um, but it, it is just like a marketing name to bring other blockchains into this um, club. I don't know how to say, it. yeah, collective. I see the point that everybody understands if you say blockchain. I see the point that uh, you don't have to explain very much behind that. And also, uh, Hans, we also sound very smart and techy. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe I think we're still open to newer ideas. What would be an alternative, Hans, according to you? Well, I would have go uh, into my mind and <laughs> try to find something. There's nothing obvious uh, on the surface which I could tell you. I don't know. To my mind, I think blockchain is something that today everybody is talking, governments are talking, I think companies are talking, and uh, I think that seems to be the cutting edge uh, in governance, in uh, efficiency, blah, 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 all that we are trying to do. So I think from our kind of uh, source, from our concerns or our last mile concerns and UBI concerns, that uh, to be in that space is for us, it's very important. I think it's from that perspective that mm, we are all yeah. using the term. Uh, but notice uh, the banks call their central bank digital currency. They don't call it blockchain. blockchain. Although there's a blockchain, kind of a blockchain behind it. Maybe digital would be the most common. No? <laughs> no, I, I disagree. <laughs> digital is uh, the way for uh, the elite to control all our money. We don't want to have to do anything with that, I think. For me yeah. personally, I think the term blockchain is what uh, brought us together. We are all working for the kind of same goal, either UBI, ending extreme poverty, um, all those mechanisms, and we're doing that using blockchain technology. So that's the first reason why we together at the first place. So it wouldn't make sense to me to change uh, this name. We are doing this thanks to blockchain and well, period. <laughs> so I retract with honor. <laughs> <laughs> but, Thank uh, you for but, disturbing well, us. <laughs> yeah, but, but good that we have now very strong rationale why we are using blockchain because of your question. Yeah, thank you for your input. <laughs> Always good to disturb us. <laughs> I didn't want to disturb. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, no, it's good, it's good, it's good. <laughs> uh, okay, and then the Beto, the, you want to show the website as well or now? Or? Um, I would like to have Scott Morris now that he just yeah, jumped Scott, in. Scott, you're back. Yes, and we can continue after that. Yeah. Scott, so you're going to explain about the mapping session that is planned for the 29th of October. Yeah, that's the idea anyway. Yeah. Uh, so just quickly, for those who don't know me, hi, I'm Scott Morris. Uh, as you can see, sorry to be very punny, but my background is in community currencies. Uh, helping people earn new types of income using phones to pay for things has been my thing since 2008, 2009. I've uh, been watching crypto the whole time, uh, though I'm, I'm genuinely sorry that I'm not a Bitcoin billionaire. <laughs> um, we're all in the same boat. So uh, anyway, uh, I have been uh, working across a number of ecosystems, uh, especially this year and the second half of last year, 
uh, just kind of conspiring to, you know, help the movement level up uh, in a way. And, you know, we there's so many platforms and protocols and other kinds of players that recognize that they have some piece of the puzzle and that uh, a major challenge that we're up against now is knowing how our pieces fit together with respect to the pieces they have over there and over there. Um, so uh, if, if we're continuing with the pieces of the puzzle analogy, what I became very interested in is the, the cover of the puzzle box, right? Is there some image with all the pieces together that we can start to, to, to work with? Um, and, you know, basically what I've got as a framework to put forward here is uh, something that I developed through my own local community organizing work um, as kind of a way to network across networks and to help them, uh, you know, see where there are collaborative overlaps. Um, and it's, it takes a very sort of uh, functionally oriented approach um, based on the uh, recognition that most of these systems have something to do with sharing resources for shared purposes, right? Um, so uh, looking at the process by which, right, we uh, make decisions around how to leverage those resources to serve shared purposes uh, helps uh, create quite a map of the, the types of activities. Um, and then based on that map of the activities, we can then kind of uh, look at the different layers of, you know, the meta model solution stack, if you will. And personally, I use a five layer breakdown, uh, the different legal uh, solutions that just to kind of use some very, you know, uh, umbrella terms here, right? So not, not only the types of legal entities you're using, but, you know, types of mechanisms, structures, whatever, uh, then financial, solutions and mechanisms, technical tools and ecosystems. And as we know, the tech stack kind of fits in with this, this lane. Uh, so there's different levels you know, that we can dive into there. Uh, then operations, uh, operational is my fourth level because the legal gives you, you know, what's available in the financial and then that informs the technical, which then goes into an operation, which then delivers to the world at the last level, which is the social level. Um, so this is where, you know, what kinds of programs are we running? Um, and, you know, what I'm very interested in there is, you know, building up a global map of the different locations that, you know, we're active in, right? One or more of our, the partners in the alliance or alliance of alliances, right? We have some presence in these places and then we should be able to see like what what's going on there. Um, uh, and basically, if we look at each of these ecosystems, you know, you can, you can map the ecosystem and tell stuff about what's going on there. But if we start to build up in this common construct, right, we should be able to see where we have uh, overlaps, right, where we might be reinventing the wheel and gaps, right, that we need to channel resources to address, right, as far as creating greater levels of interoperability across mm -hmm. the ecosystems. Um, so that's the, 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 the kind of setup. Um, I'm not at all promising that this is going to occur in one session uh, together. Uh, and just for reference, um, and I mentioned this er earlier in the call, this is a process that I'm currently uh, de developing and designing along with some other partners um, for uh, use in a, a global uh, cooperative uh, that has a number of, it's kind of gov being governed sociocratically, right? You've got a number of thematic circles and whatnot, the, all, all the stuff that could, uh, occurring on the global level, and you have localized chapters of it. Uh, this is the Zebras Unite Cooperative. Um, and so I'm facilitating this as a way of designing the zebra economy and, you know, potentially a number of complementary currencies slash impact tokens, like whatever. As you can see, I have a fundamentally kind of pluralistic approach here. Uh, and I think that that's uh, a, a handy frame, uh, provides a lot of uh, use value rather than trying to find the silver bullet, uh, which I don't think exists. Um, and that, that, that process is looking to take um, probably three months uh, to, to run through with, you know, the, the various stakeholders in that cooperative and uh, their, uh, yeah, the various circles that have relevant input there. Um, 
so yes, this is definitely not a just like, you know, we're going to throw up a mural board and play in there for a couple hours and we'll, we'll have the thing. Um, I think my primary question is just that's, that's kind of like the, 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 the deep end of where we could go with this. Uh, the real question on my mind is like, what are we trying to map? Right? What, what does this group of people want mm -hmm. to map um, so that we can make sure that we satisfy those requirements even while I try and be clever in the background and do some ecosystem alignment? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, just as a time saver. So that's all for me. Thank you, Scott. Uh, I, I invited Scott because I had the I have the the expectation to at the end of this mapping session um, have some things that some have the organizations and the services we offer as modules which, where we can just like let's say plug and play to adopt them into the local context so that when in the hackathons um, people can say. Uh, Kotani has this technology, but is located on this context, and there are other these organizations, so I can use them. Or, oh, I can use all these, but I cannot use this because it's not based on my um, context. So we, as a UBI blockchain collective alliance, uh, we will need to find some other partner alliance uh, ally to fit that gap, right? So that we can start closing those gaps and have a global plug and play for the local context. And that's that's my goal with this mapping. And what I will do is to constantly uh, onboard more organizations and put them, update them in this map, so that we can uh, have it uh, updated. Yeah. Great. I think that we can we can get some of those outcomes. <laughs> yeah, happy to take any other questions or, or comments. Uh, but yeah, as I said, I would be able to follow up with uh, some documentation of at least a, a, a planned flow through, you know, using this uh, tool that we're building here. But yeah. Uh, Chris. Oh, excuse No, up to you, Hans. Yeah. Uh, Chris, are you uh, planning to to use a special tool for the argumentative mapping? Scott, uh, I'm basically we're building out a, a map on Miro. Um, Scott, what kind of information would you prefer from us? On what which level? Um, I mean, the first thing that would be very helpful for me is just to know who is present here. Uh, you know, uh, you guys already know each other and, you know, what your platforms are and various uh, mechanisms can do. I don't yet. So uh, it would be nice to get some sort of accounting of that. Absolutely. Perhaps. Um... Would you would you prefer if we did it over a call, or would you prefer if we uh, wrote to you about it? Uh, I am. I, I, I tell you what. I can put uh, my email in the chat. At worst, uh, if we have a Telegram group or a, a Discord or something, um, you know, I can tune in there. Uh, I'm relatively channel agnostic. I go where the groups are. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, perhaps we can just use Discord then, because uh, it would be interesting for the rest of us to have a refresher on um, all the other types of organizations here. So maybe we can all give an introduction to Scott on Discord. That'd be great. You mean now, Avina? <laughs> I haven't. I I haven't joined the Discord link just yet, but uh, yeah, maybe right after this call. Okay, yeah, well, I have to, after this call, I really have to go jump into another meeting, but um, uh, so maybe if you just uh, send, yeah, give us your email. Oh, Umberto, you have an idea? 
Yeah, so this is again in the directory that I, I did. So you need to put your the bio of the organization and then Scott can read it and there are the links and so on. So all the information will be there, will be accessible for everybody, not just for Scott, uh, so that anybody that access and the dream team can also understand all the organizations here. So just give me some minutes after this and I will send it to everybody. Oh, I like the way you <laughs> anticipate on everything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, what I liked about your uh, your explanation, Scott, is that you're also looking for um, like overlap between the organizations, so that uh, you can, uh, you know, if we need some resources, that we can do like a joint joint forces and not do everything double. So that would be a quite interesting outcome as well to see the overlap and where we can uh, uh, do things together and where we should be separate. Anyone else? No? They will just wait for Umberto's uh, links to, uh, to all the forms that will organize everything. <laughs> um, um, Scott, how does uh, your, uh, your tool uh, refer to wicked problems? How does it, how's the relation? Uh, well, interesting you should ask, uh, because I am uh, co-developing this alongside uh, Cameron Burgess from Armillaria. Uh, he's one of the primary authors of the From Billions to Trillions document. Uh, you can find that at trillions.global. Uh, and I do recommend people take a look at that document. It's, uh, uh, it's got a lot going on in there. And you know, basically, I've been collaborating with him on the next iteration of this and they have a lovely definition of wicked problems. Uh, I mean, ultimately my theory of systems change uh, is like I said, fundamentally pluralistic uh, and that, you know, uh, this is a grouping of, of people and platforms and protocols who have a, a, a preferred mechanism in UBI, but there's multiple mechanisms that are all available there. Uh, and, you know, a lot of those you can see kind of depicted uh, here in my virtual background. Um, but, you know, DAOs are included in this. Uh, and, you know, ultimately all of these things are being built so that we can use them to deal with wicked problems, you know. So uh, wicked problems are those, you know, systemic issues uh, that we see, you know, kind of spoken to in the UN, sustainable development goals, whatever sort of breakdown you want to take. That's fine. This is one of these things I'm rather agnostic about. Um, at some point you do have to make decisions about these things to make impact trackable uh, because that's, I believe, a, a hugely valuable uh, type of data. And we absolutely should be, you know, collecting that, leveraging that at every opportunity. Um, but yeah, if, if you want a more formal definition, I would refer you to that document. Thanks. Great. Thank you, uh, Scott. And welcome, uh, Julio. You just made it in time for the final 15 minutes and I will. <laughs> and you will be in the core team for circles and preparing the hackathon, if you didn't know that, which will be oh, in February. Great. <laughs> great. Great. Yeah, sorry, I'm late. I had another meeting. Oh, that's Good no to problem. see everyone. That's, that's no problem. Uh, thank you, Scott. Is there anything else you want to um, say or is it uh, no? Okay. Thanks. Then we have uh, 15 minutes left to discuss uh, uh, if we are going to merge as a basic income blockchain collective with a UBI blockchain uh, alliance. <laughs> and if so, what is in the name? What is going to be the name? Um, Maybe Umberto, you can tell it because we all know the history of the Basic Income Blockchain Collective because we were the we started it uh, all together. So maybe you can explain a little bit of history from the uh, about the Basic Income UBI no sorry UBI Blockchain Alliance. Yes. Uh, so so the UBI Blockchain Alliance started as a group of proactive members of Proof of Humanity, but as the name says. It, it does not say Proof of Humanity Alliance, it says UBI. So we started because we were summoned by the Proof of Humanity uh, solution, but we were not never married to it. So um, we developed like a newsletter, a YouTube, 
um, and the community and the Twitter, right? So the, the community already knows us as the UBI Blockchain Alliance and knows that they that we are community members. We are not uh, part of Proof of Humanity, but we, we are like peers. We are like everybody else. So I was telling Hilde that uh, in, in a marketing perspective, will be great to just use this UBI Blockchain Alliance name into the UBI Blockchain Collective and so that we can leverage the uh, community that already knows what we have been doing and then will be an evolution because um, I won't be doing both things. So there, are, there won't be two organizations, will be only one. And if we focus on the name of collective, then all the effort of marketing, let's say, uh, will be lost for the name of Alliance and and that's it. It's, it's more about that the community already recognizes the Alliance name and that's it. It's, it's nothing more than that. And how big is the community? So YouTube has already 500 uh, plus uh, subscribers and the community knows the newsletter for from four months or something like that ago. Um, so it's, it's about that. It's, it's very proof of humanity based because we just serve to prove humanity, but it's a, a lot of people that already knows about it and they are not married also with proof of humanity, but they are also looking for many other UBI settings and the community is big in Latin America where proof of humanity is, is stronger. So that for the hackathon, for example, will make a bigger impact having the name of Alliance, but it's just a marketing thing. So it's, it's about deciding that. I was telling Hilde that uh, my, my idea was to using both, but on the narrative, like having the UBI Blockchain Alliance as name, and then on our narrative, use constantly collective, as it is more about the values and, and like we are the collective uh, doing this instead of saying we are the group or we are like something else. So using both in the narrative. Okay, there are um, so and and what 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 is the the difference between the UBR blockchain alliance and and what we are as a group as a as a collective now with different different uh, projects and organizations, uh, you know, like circles, uh, UBI vaults, uh, impact markets. Uh, not all of them are open source. I, th I don't think I don't. I'm not sure about impact markets. Maybe you are. Are you open source? Yes, we are. Okay. Um, so, what is the difference between the alliance and the collective as a community? Is it, the alliance was born from the proof of humanity group. Um, is there any difference? No. no, it's it's practically the same. So, what I was telling is that uh, we will change the name. Uh, for example, YouTube, it's Proof of Humanity UBI. We'll change it to whatever we define and the subscribers will be there. Uh, but the newsletters, like all the newsletters that we have uh, released in the past, they have Pro um, UBI Blockchain Alliance. And so like we'll gi give continuity and will be more an evolution rather than like stopping, starting something new. Okay, then we have to talk about two things. One is um, if we want to merge, but that is more like um, a feeling. Uh, is there anyone who wants to give his or her opinion about that? I think, uh, Hilde, it's up to uh, you both, Umberto and you. Really? Okay. Well, well, I think I think we should I think we should try to merge. I give my opinion first, then because I don't feel it's 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 feasible. Well, I don't see any uh, advantage of having two sort of like groups that uh, uh, um, uh, advocate to 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 collaborate basically on uh, on basic income and blockchain uh, with different uh, different organizations. I mean, I think the aim is 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 the same. Uh, but I do, uh, uh, well, I do feel that we really have to talk about the name 
um, and forget about the marketing because it's only four months and only a few hundred people. I think if we decide to change to change the name into collective and basic income, um, then it should be worth it. I think we should really discuss this uh, 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 from the heart and not from a marketing point of view because it's all very new. And I'm not a native English speaker, so I give the word to Sarath, who is our poet, and he will explain <laughs> the difference between alliance and collective from his point of view. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not a poet, but I, uh, I, I, my preference to the word community or co collective, uh, I prefer collective because I think what signal we give to the rest of the world because we are going to now become visible globally and uh, to the important stakeholders. So because we, our, we as uh, Umberto himself said just now that we come together because of certain values and certain uh, things that disturb all of us about this world. And that's why we are doing what we are doing. So uh, the collective gives a sense of community, a set of shared values, and uh, that we operate as community with that sentiment. Uh, uh, so it just, it just gives that sense. So when, when we are, when we are um, uh, interacting with other stakeholders in the space, in the blockchain space or in other fintech space, I think uh, we should be able to give that uh, sense. And I, can, I agree with what Hilda is saying that uh, I think I, that's my rationale for that. And alliance is a value neutral, politically neutral term. I think we should have something that represents the community that we are and we want to continue and the bond of that community. That's my uh, take on that. But I will go with what Hilda will decide finally. <laughs> no, 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 I don't, I don't like, like authority in the democracy. <laughs> we can put it on Discord and we can put the names and then we can vote and it's easy as, as that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, what I meant is I finally will go by what Umberto and Hilda together will decide. Yeah, from an uh, English sound perspective, uh, collective, that sounds like we have to collect something. And an alliance sounds like uh, we have to agree. And I think alliance uh, sounds better. Hilda? I was thinking like from a point of view, like like I told you at the first meeting that I don't know, I know about the topic, but I don't know much. But then like how it sounds to me as I'm, let's say external, not not more, like not anymore, but but maybe we can give us another uh, homework and just ask the people around, like, you know, like our friends or people we work with, what they, uh, what they think about or what they think when they hear Alliance and when they hear Collective. And maybe it could also be nice, like, um, to, to just to hear about that because like I am working with a friend here and I was asking her what do you feel about and then she was like yeah maybe alliance is like they want me as an ally you know like I could jump in and collective would be like I don't know maybe I need to know more to be part of that group so I think it also depends what what I think at the beginning you were saying what kind of audience you want to attract if you want to attract people that are a lot like in the field working actually in the field maybe I think collective is like, yeah, I'm part of it. I'm also work of it. And but if you want to bring together people like different backgrounds and that, maybe alliance is like I, I can actually help from my what I know or something. But yeah, I think it's um it maybe like you were saying, Hilda, it's like more let's think more about it uh, from the heart side. I don't know. But I think a good exercise could be just I don't know, asking people around, like two or three friends and just hear their thoughts about these two words. And then maybe later we can, after that we can vote as Umberto was saying. Yeah, I think we should vote. And then, uh, I mean, when, when Sarah said, said to me, like, you know, an alliance can also be, you know, we can go, we can go to war as an alliance, as a collective, it's more difficult. You know, we can, have, we can be an alliance of arms and weapons. Uh, that's also an alliance <laughs> and the collective is more uh, uh, warm and, and, and collaboration it's more about collaboration that's why i thought you know um um, um yeah we really we really we really have to, to 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 think this through and i don't think we should have the marketing issue as a as a motivation we really think 
we really should should think and feel uh, what the, what the name is going to be. Um, so you will set up a poll, uh, a voting, uh, a quadratic voting, um, Beto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. Um, I will put in Discord um, like this homework of asking around and maybe also adding a new third word because maybe we're just focusing on these two and maybe there is another third word that we haven't thing and then we can vote and I can I can do that. I would like to take these last five minutes or four minutes. I will send the, who I, you, would, I will send would, the... Want, want to add one more thing because yeah. there's one more difference and that which is UBI versus basic income. Uh, uh, within the like overall global basic income movement, we are more, um, moving towards using basic income instead of UBI. Um, uh, not that we are against the term UBI, but basic income is, is, is more clear to, to, to many people. I mean, the U can be universal, unconditional, uh, uniform, uh, whatever. Uh, um, um, so it can give some more discussion. So when you do your poll, uh, please also give the options of you, yeah, the differences between UBI and, uh, and basic income. So Arthur, do you want to add something to that? Yeah, I think there are, the, the, I, I, what Hilda said is, I think uh, there is also a lot of discussion. We are today talking about a, a basic income system, uh, taking into account different contributions that can come from different experiences, different contexts, and different uh, experiences of what this is all about. I think, um, in fact, I, I never use uh, UBI. I, when I write, I you always use basic income because when you say basic income, it implies it has five characteristics. And if you are adding you, then you also have to add then all the four others. Uh, I think this was one uh, argument one of uh, our, our community members was raising. So uh, it gives us much more, much more. Uh, I think it's much more generic. That's I, I my preference is uh, to have basic income, but um, finally, name is a name. I mean, we also have to see what it resonates to other people. And today, there's also another issue that. So a lot of people are using UBI uh, coming from very different uh, points of departure, not necessarily what all of us agree. Uh, it's being used like right, left and center by all kinds of forces. I don't know. Um, so it has become very fashionable in some quarters to use UBI. And also uh, it's also to justify many things that many governments are doing, they're using UBI. So I don't know, uh, I think this is a, a, it's a question mark. I think we should agree as a community, we should agree on uh, this. I think we can have lots of uh, arguments about which is better, which is not. So I can only say that, Hilda. Yeah, so let's conclude that uh, we are aiming to merge and uh, uh, um, we will be discussing a little bit more on the, on the final name. Is that some? Okay. Yeah. Umberto, two more minutes you have. <laughs> yeah, so I sent the presentation of the um, um, Dream Teams. Uh, it's just like a quick thing, explaining them. And at the end is the, let's say, the larger document. But in here, if you access to the to the website, or maybe I can share, but it will maybe take more time. Um, here, share. Do you see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, how can we organize uh, in two pizza dream teams? Like two pizza is uh, a, a, an approach that comes from, that is between four people to seven people, 10 people and the working groups will be coordination, growth, hackathon, onboarding, development, and fundraising, and will depend uh, which working groups we have on the champions or on the people that we as organizations uh, put to become part of these working groups. Because the idea, as we said before, is that these working groups are formed or built by members from our organizations and not just like, um, 
calling people to, to help us on this. Um, and so here are some explanations of what is each group um, and what, what are their goals. In the larger document, it, it goes a little bit deeper. And then um, also the ways of working is that the Dream Team champions will follow a collective mandate that will be our collective mandate um, because we will prioritize, we will define our priorities and then we will vote for these priorities. So the working, the Dream Team will work on those priorities. As we said before, they will use Discord as a common space for communicating between orgs and they will report weekly to the general public because they will do it uh, through YouTube and to, to us. And a AMA is Ask Me Anything so that we can uh, go into these um, stand-up sessions to ask about anything related to, to the work. And one thing that I put here is that this is suggestion, but I think it's very important to have people that form the working groups that have at least 20 hours a week of time availability or maybe not at least, but that have 20 hours and um, that they come from our organizations. <clears throat> and then finally, this thing I think is very important because how are we going to pay these people? And well, um, one thing is that we as organizations should be paying these people from because they are members of our organization, so they are already working, but they will give, let's say, 20 hours of their time to be on this team. So that will be like a subsidy of that. Otherwise, if there is no budget from an organization, we can uh, uh, discover or, or, or explore other approaches. And one thing is will be uh, offering professional services to the members of the collective so that, for example, if somebody wants to have a marketing uh, team, then this organization can hire the dream team of the uh, collective and so on. And then other thing is setting up a gift economy page like Patreon, but in this case it's on Web3 and it's called Giveth and it's from uh, the Commons stack, so it's uh, really value aligned. And another thing would be to maybe ask a membership fee, which can be avoided if the organization that is from the collective puts the person there. So if I, if I am as an organization put up a person to work in this dream team, I do not pay anything. But if I don't put a person, then I can uh, finance uh, so somebody other organization uh, member to work in here. And then the, the last thing is the steps that I will send you through email that is register your organization, register yourself as member and register your champions and these champions is uh, for the hackathon and for the other working groups. Register your priorities also in Discord. I will put everything in Discord so you can see it and will be easy and then at the end will be voting but this will take two weeks to do but the most important thing will be this, to register yourself so that uh, Scott can see and understand this and the people from the different teams can also do it. And that's it. <laughs> that's a lot of information for in two minutes. <laughs> Sorry, it was five. Thank you. I will, re I will re replay it. <laughs> afterwards um yeah so uh so the, the the first the first next step is is the uh the um uh, the link that you send us um uh, for the regist registration on the on the uh as, as a as an organization and the vote and um the options uh about the name uh and i think we really need to discuss that and you know uh take a little bit more time for that before voting yeah um okay then uh the time is up which is uh, good that we are over that we have more more to talk about than we have time so uh <laughs> that will that will fill up our next meeting which will be on the 29th of october uh mainly uh focusing on the mapping session uh with uh, scott so looking forward, I will, uh, uh, as always, send you the link uh, to the video and uh, Nielsche, you will take the lead in uh, organizing the um, uh, core team uh, hackathon sessions, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Have a great weekend and holidays for those who are going on holiday. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.